the best I can do to eliminate shadows on the canvas. This is always a challenge when I want to do one of these paint on canvas videos for you and we're not at the table because the lighting is always funky and there's always weird shadows. But anyway, this is our canvas that we did the acrylic pour on and we got this really beautiful background, very lightly colored. It's just really, it's really pretty. And the first thing we're going to do now, we're going to do to step two. First thing we're going to do is we're going to grab some alcohol, rubbing alcohol, and a paper towel. And I'm going to wipe down the surface of the canvas because some of the paint, not all of it, but some of it had oil in it. And um, I don't want that pre to prevent any other layers or varnish or anything from sticking on the canvas. Usually I don't have to do anything except this. You can also like put baby powder on that and let it sit for a minute and then that usually absorbs the oil too. Sometimes I, occasionally I do both, but usually the alcohol will get it. So, I'm going to let that dry for a second. I've pulled some bits and pieces out from my um, stash. I've got some of my melted metal embellishments I made a while back. I've got some stenciled on and jelly printed paper. I've got some painty papers, painty scraps and painty scrapbooking paper. I have one of my dryer sheets that I did some stuff on, a print of one of my other journal pages, painted corrugated cardboard, random texture stuff that I either had or y'all have sent to me. This one was one of my old Punchinella stencils. The rest of this was sent to me in Happy Mail. A print of one of my new rubber stamps. This is the original sketch. It's a print of the original sketch. It's not the original sketch. And product packaging. This is a tea box. This is one of my favorite kinds of tea. And the inside of the box looks like that. So I've got all this stuff here on my table. I've got... <laughs> I almost didn't know where it was. I've got some gel medium. I'm going to use a mat just because it's what I have. It's out and I actually want to use this Liquitex can up. Um, and so we're going to add a few of these things. Oh, I also have some, oops, I also have some paint skins. Um, so some of these are just blobs of paint. Some of these are paint I've pushed through um, stencils, like this is one of my new stencils. So I may want to use some of these on here too. We'll see. <laughs> All right. So we're going to get going and we're going to add some stuff to the canvas. I'm going to speed forward through the process, but when I need to explain to you what I'm doing and why I'm doing it, I will stop. At the end, I will explain where we're at and uh, let's get started, shall we? All right, I'll be back.
So I have to tell you that I liked it much better before I put the teal paint on there, but I am going to let the whole thing dry and having the teal mess on there, because that's what we're going to honestly call it, has given me an idea and I think it's a I think it's a good one if I can execute it the way it looks in my head. I think it's a good one. We're going to put a face on here and it won't be a Buddha face, although believe me, I'm tempted. I have much more practice drawing Buddha faces on canvas than I do other faces, but I have my inspiration book out of people and faces and I'm going to use one of the pictures in there for just um, keeping me on track with color and light and shadow and we are going to sketch a loose sketchy face on here and we're going to see what happens in part three. I'll be back.